<laughs> I passed! <laughs> Yay! I have a Philippine driving license and I've been driving for about a decade now, but here I am struggling to get my driving license in the Netherlands. I heard it was difficult to pass the license exam here in the Netherlands. So much rules, memorization, and little room for mistakes. Hey there, Natasha here from The Traveling Foxes. Are you thinking of taking your Dutch driving license exam soon or just curious about how easy or difficult it is to get a license to drive in the Netherlands? In this video, I'm going to share you my personal experiences of me trying to get my driver's license. And I say trying because I actually haven't gotten it yet. Um, I just passed the theory exam a couple of months ago and I'm currently doing my driving lessons. And I discovered how insanely difficult and expensive it is, especially for foreigners who have no clue about the roads and the process here of where to start. So my boyfriend and I purchased a car sometime last year, just so we can do some road trips around the Netherlands and soon in other countries. I could in reality have exchanged my Philippine driving license since my partner is a highly skilled migrant or has a 30% ruling, but I would have to give up my Philippine driving license and I didn't really want to do that. Plus I wanted to earn this myself and really learn how the Dutch roads um, work and all the laws here because I am not EU and it's definitely different from where I come from. So if you're also outside of the EU and you want to drive here, it's best to check out the rules and the processes, whether or not you can exchange your foreign driving license. Otherwise, you'd have to go to the traditional route of taking the theory test and doing your practical exam to get the driving license. You have to. First thing to know about the Dutch driving license, it's one of the most universally accepted driving license because it's part of the EU, but it's also among the most difficult to obtain. The super specific testing process combined with great infrastructure means that Dutch roads are some of the most safest in the world. A, a huge contrast from where I come from the Philippines where I didn't have to sweat about taking the exam and sometimes you can even hire someone to process your license quick and easy. And there's even a saying that when you learn how to drive in Manila specifically, you can drive anywhere in the world just because the roads are crazier and you have to deal with all the traffic. But now I actually would have to disagree because it, I find it much harder to drive here in the Netherlands, at least during my lessons because there are just so many rules that you need to learn. Plus in the Netherlands, you have to deal with cyclists and trams. The downside of course is you have to prepare to spend a lot of money as the theory course alone costs about 100 euros, plus other things like paying for the health declaration, uh, booking an appointment. Driving lessons would depend on how much hours you would need, but roughly it's about 1,000 to 2,500 euros um, for the driving lessons alone. When I started my journey getting a license here, it was quite overwhelming. But the first thing you need to do is to just check CBR and log in with your DGD if you already have one, and then just go through the steps. This is my book. So I'm actually quite happy that um, in the Netherlands, you can take the exams in English. Um, obviously it would be in, in Dutch because the road signs here are all in Dutch. So you'd also need to learn some Dutch words, but um, the rules and yeah, taking the exam are in English. And you can also hire an English speaking instructor. So the theory is very difficult to pass. I've heard a lot of stories from people failing the test their, from their first and second try. And it's not because it's long. There's a lot of info you need to absorb and you have very little room for mistakes. Think of it like having 3000 plus possible questions and you're only being asked 90 of them. And if you get say five of them wrong, then you, you fail. So that's why you need to study. And unfortunately, there is a lot of memorization involved. You need to know things like what is the maximum speed of a bromobile compared to a moped? I mean, first of all, what is a bromobile? You need to know the different types of vehicles and their maximum and minimum speed. Maximum speeds of cars in a motorway versus a provincial road. There are also a lot of situational questions and theories you need to know, like knowing when to brake, 
release gas or do nothing. And by the way, these are timed. I think about like eight seconds to think. So you have to really think fast and act like it's it's in real life. And another important thing is knowing the priority in like hundreds of different scenarios. Um, and this is super crucial to practice because there are a lot of questions in the actual test. For the knowledge and insight, you should be able to name and recognize the traffic rules. And this is easy when you not only know these rules by heart, but you memorize a lot of them because you're only given, I think about six or seven allowable mistakes for you to be able to pass. I studied for about two weeks in total and not including the theory crash course I attended, which is on a full day. Just a word of caution, this crash course is super brain draining. They try to feed you with all the information in within seven to eight hours in one whole day. And you will definitely feel drained from all of the information they're trying to squeeze in your head. My suggestion, do, do the crash course at least a week before your exam so it stays fresh in your mind. You can get the book if you want, but it's just a supplement. I did read all of these things from cover to cover because um, I'm crazy like that. But in my opinion, the online version is also way better. So if you're studying for the theory test, go to the site called Theory Examine. I'm gonna link all the necessary info below. But this site really, really helped me a lot. I read all of the theories and took more than 10 mock exams. And I made sure to pass at least four or five mock exams to make sure that I'm really prepared for it. You can have unlimited access to this for a particular time and it doesn't really cost that much. The key for me was just to read, test, fail and study your mistakes. I even took screenshots of all my mistakes and during the day when I'm in the metro or just waiting for something, I will just study them and remember the right answers. The process worked really well and it eventually helped me pass the actual test. The test itself cannot be taken online. You have to book an appointment and actually go to a test center. In my case, I had to go all the way to the Uvarden, um, which is quite a drive away from Amsterdam because it was the earliest date that I can book and that was already two months in advance. So for you, if you're doing this as well, I suggest that you plan it way in advance because you not only need to pass the theory exam, you need to do your driving lessons and you need to book all these dates as well that is in or near to your city. I am on my way to take the driving test here in Leeuwarden. Yeah! It's a lot more pressure to, to pass this test because yeah, it took us about um, almost two hours to drive from Amsterdam. So. I was super nervous when I got to the test center as the environment can be quite nerve wracking, um, but you do get to see your results immediately after you submit. And I was so, so happy to find out that I passed. But as we know, that's only half the battle as I still need to finish my driving lessons. I'm doing manual driving lessons, so that is taking me a while. But I have booked my practical exam for 4th of March. Hopefully, if it doesn't get delayed with all this COVID lockdown. But I will definitely make sure to update you guys when I get my driver's license and finally be able to drive. For now, let me know in the comments below what you think, how is your experience so far, if you've already done it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Traveling Foxes if you haven't yet for more travel videos and expat tips for myself living here in the Netherlands. Bye for now, guys.